Hey there. In this video, let's verify Ohm's law using a simple circuit. Here are two simple circuits which could be used to verify Ohm's law. Let me name them circuit 1 and circuit 2. In circuit 1, we observe that there are a bunch of cells, a resistance R, a voltmeter V, an ammeter A and a plug key K. Whereas in our circuit 2, we have a battery, a resistance R, a voltmeter V, an ammeter A, a plug key K and a rheostat. In order to verify Ohm's law, we need to be able to either vary the potential difference V across the circuit or the current I in the circuit. If I want to vary the potential difference across the circuit, I would need to be able to change the number of cells in my circuit. Whereas, if I want to vary the current in the circuit, I would need some kind of a variable resistance that can alter the magnitude of current flowing in the circuit. So the, in the first circuit that I have outlined over here, the variable that I will be bearing is the potential difference. While in the second circuit, the variable that will be bearing would be the current. So for the first circuit that we were talking about, we are bearing the potential difference across the circuit by introducing more and more number of cells in the circuit. The resistance R over here used is a 0.5 meter long wire made up of nichrome. So nichrome is an alloy made up of nickel, chromium, manganese and iron. So what are we going to do? We are going to first place one cell in the circuit, introduce the plug into the plug key and then measure what is the reading on my voltmeter and the reading on the ammeter? Let's say that the ammeter reading was 2 ampere while the voltmeter reading was 8 volt. That is, this battery has a potential difference of 8 volt. So, if I take the ratio of V by I, what I get is 4 ohm. Once I do this, I remove the plug key out of the plug and now break the circuit and now make the circuit open. This needs to be done every time we change the arrangement of the cells. Now in my second attempt, I am going to take two cells that are connected in series now. So the net voltage across my uh, across x, y is going to be 16 volt. I place the plug into the plug key once again and measure the readings on my voltmeter and ammeter. At this stage, the volt, the, the ammeter reading would be 4 ampere. If I take the ratio of V by I, I will again get 4 ohm. Let me now remove the plug key, introduce another cell into my battery set and measure what would be the current reading on my ammeter. I place the plug back into the plug key and now I see that my voltmeter reading is 24 volt while my current reading is 6 ampere. The ratio of these two is 4 ohm. Let's introduce another cell into my battery set. That is of course after removing the plug from the plug key. So when I do that, now the net voltage that I have or the net potential difference that I am going to be supplying is going to be 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 or rather 8 into 4 which is 32 volt. So when I close the, the circuit once again, that's when I put the plug back into the plug key, my voltmeter reading is going to be 32 volt while my ammeter reading is going to become 8 amperes now. The ratio that I am going to see 
32 by 8 is still 4 ohm. So we see that for different combinations of V and I, the ratio of V by I has always remained constant. Has always remained constant. Is this in line with our Ohm's law? We said that V by I should be constant. Right? And this constant was nothing but the resistance R. So, we have verified Ohm's law using this simple circuit where we have only been varying the applied potential difference across the circuit. We can do the same thing over here by plotting V and I on a graph. Let's see how that would look like. A graph can be drawn between current I on the x-axis and potential difference V on the y-axis. These different combinations 2,8, 4,16, 6,24 and 8,32 can be plotted on this I versus V graph. So let's just plot them and see how they might look like. So 2,8 might be somewhere over here, 4,6 somewhere here, 6,24 here and 8,32 here. We see that all of them roughly fall on a straight line. Let's draw a straight line to confirm. So my straight line starting from the origin would lie something very close to this. So this linear relationship shows that the potential difference V is proportional to I. This is a linear relationship. Linear relationship. A similar verification can be done using the second circuit. So in the second circuit, the main thing that has changed is the introduction of the rheostat. What does the rheostat do? The rheostat is a variable resistance. It is a variable resistance and this helps us to alter the magnitude of current. It alters the magnitude of current of current in the circuit. This magnitude of current can be varied in the circuit. So similar to the earlier case, the two things that we'd be looking at is the voltmeter reading and the ammeter reading. Unlike in the previous case where we were introducing more and more number of cells in a step-by-step -step way, here the battery used is not changed. So imagine we have a current I flowing in this circuit. By sliding this jockey across the rheostat, the voltmeter and the ammeter readings are going to keep changing. So how do we start off this experiment? We start off this experiment by sliding the jockey in such a way that we have the least reading in our ammeter. So let's say, of course, these numbers that I'm taking are just random numbers that I can think of on the fly. So let's say that the rheostat's slider is at its least position, giving the least value of current. Let's say the current in my ammeter is about 4 ampere and the voltmeter reading shows 8 volt. So if I take the ratio of 8 by 4, I get a resistance of 2 ohm. In the next stage, I'm going to make this slider move a little bit to the right, meaning the net resistance of this variable resistor is going to increase meaning that the current in this circuit is going to decrease a little bit. Let's say the current has now decreased to 3 amperes, while my voltmeter reading might show up as 6 volt. What is the ratio of V by I in this case? It is again 2 ohms. Let me move the slider a little bit more to the right, meaning that the net resistance has increased a little bit more for the, re for the rheostat. That would imply that my current would decrease a little bit in the circuit. Let's say the reading of my ammeter is 2 ampere while my voltmeter reading is 4 volt. What is the ratio of V by I here? 
it is again 2 ohm. I can go on and on by varying the effective resistance of this variable resistor, thereby reducing or controlling how much current is flowing in the circuit and going to be taking down the readings of V and A. So, this is how we go about with verifying Ohm's law using this kind of a circuit. The story is not very much different. The only difference between the first and the second circuit is what was being varied. In the first circuit, we varied the potential difference across the circuit, while in the second case, we varied the current in the circuit. So, in both the cases, we see that the resistance of the circuit remains constant. So, from this observation table, we can see that the ratio of V by I always is constant. This verifies Ohm's law. 